Look sure can be deceiving. Whilst on the surface, Conqueror's Bad Fur Day may appear to be your typical child-friendly platforming game, dig any deeper and you'd find that its mature rating is no understatement. Coming from Rare, the British studio responsible for hit titles such as Killer Instinct, Donkey Kong Country and GoldenEye 007, Conqueror saw much controversy leading up to its release due to its deceptive art style. Nintendo were worried children may think the title was similar to other non-adult platformers such as Rare's very own Banjo-Kazooie. This led to Nintendo of America ignoring the game in its Nintendo Power magazine. Additionally, Nintendo of Europe decided to not publish the title in Europe, although this was said to be due to the cost of localization not being commercially viable. Popular children's toy retailer KB Toys even refused to sell the game for this reason. Interestingly, unlike the ESRB 17 Plus rating, Europe's Elspa rated it 15 years and older. Also, the box art for the PAL versions escaped the paranoid disclaimer that the game was not suitable for children, and turned it into a joke. Despite all of its controversy, surely this unapologetically adult title avoided being struck with censorship, right? In existence are two early versions of the game that have some very significant changes when compared with the final release. The first being the ECTS version, which is from a build shown during the Electronic Computer Trade Show a year prior to its release. The second is of a later NTSC debug build. Scenes such as this were purged from the game and, according to the devs, this was under Nintendo's orders. Note the leader's distinct moustache, the familiar emblem on the podium, as well as the peculiar hand gesture, or perhaps salute, that they are all doing. Here we have another censored scene, which, whilst not as widely offensive as the previous one, perhaps was even more understandable for Nintendo to take issue with. Notice the familiar looking tail popping up above the table? As for the rest, well, we'll let you see for yourself. Hang on a sec. Come here. Where are you little bastard? Come here. Good. Missed. Come here. Got away again. Sorry about that. You know how it is. Gotta catch them all. Right. Again, it's not surprising Nintendo would take issue with their famous Pokemon mascot Pikachu being thrust into this sinister world and abused. Unlike the scene shown previously, this cutscene was not removed entirely from the final version. However, of course, Pikachu was completely removed. Let's get back to business. I just got one thing to do. I'll be with you in a minute. People gotta show the appropriate levels of respect. When they step out of line, they can expect to be respected back. One of you guys has shown no respect. Who it is? I don't know. Could have been Frankie. Could have been Chicho. Could have been Polly. <laughs> You don't you ever do that again to me! Next up is yet another edited cutscene, this time involving a squirrel undergoing surgery while still alive. It's actually pretty disturbing. Oh no. What are they doing? Oh no. He's still alive. This version comes from the ECTS build, but interestingly, the NTSC debug version that came a bit later modified this scene, but not at all like the final version did. The retail release is very different, and instead involves the two surgeons having a pretty fitting conversation, considering the reason for its inclusion. 
Really? Yeah, that's incredible. I mean, what if you were to give this game to, say, yes, 20 yes. intelligent people? I mean, what would that do? Let's face it, what would it do? Really? That's interesting. What the f is that bloody squirrel? Quick, into character! By the way, this dialogue was originally planned to be part of a series of funny outtakes during the end credits. Back to another case of censorship that, if not made, would have had a very wide-reaching level of offensiveness. In the final version, Frankie the Pitchfork thanks Conker for cutting them down from a rope, and says, it was like one of them executions you hear about, before the camera then cuts to another group of characters who are now addressed as executioners. Now, what was originally planned for this scene does not exist in the early builds, but you can hear some of the team talk about this in their director's commentary playthrough of the game, which, by the way, you should all definitely check out sometime for lots of fascinating behind-the-scenes info about the game. Oh, look, that, <laughs> that's a story there. Uh, we don't think that's a story. Oh, it was mm -hmm. the, the clan. With well, the clan. It used to be the clan. It yeah, was the clan, yeah. Clan. 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 That looks like one of them little lynchings you hear about. Yeah. yeah. And it was the clan. And, and Nintendo went, <laughs> <laughs> you can check it out in the description below. Chris Seaver, the lead designer, speaks about being made to censor the game in this interview from Gamikia.com. One can't make a bolder anti-censorship statement than their reply to being asked if they would have ever toned down the content of Conquer. This being, and I quote, let me see, never, never ever ever, ever. We're about to move on to a segment all about the Xbox remake Live and Reloaded. But, to begin, we need to go into another difference that was cut out of the N64 release. Now, if you have a look at these two scenes, you'll notice that the final N64 version on the right is missing the two tied-up squirrels seen in the early version on the left. These squirrels are then violently executed by the soldiers. In the Xbox version, though, the missing squirrels have at last been restored, as seen here. So do we make actually uncensored a part of the game? Great, right? How about everything else though? Well, that's another story. Now the updated version was actually originally going to be called Live and Uncut, and, as its name would have you believe, it would have been completely uncensored. But alas, during its development things changed, and with this it was renamed to Live and Reloaded. None of the other censorship from the N64 version was removed, and the remake, in fact, added a lot more by beeping out most of the bad language. The N64 release also censored some of the more extreme swearing, as seen here. Duct tape? I'll get him a duct tape, asshole. I'll come down here, I'll show him the duct tape, I'll show him how to stuff it. Stupid All I do all day is kind of sort his stupid problems out of the asshole. Need it. Anyway, so what are we? Um, the milk, the milk, the table, the table, the table, the table. Oh, what should I do with this? But Live and Reloaded took things much further. This is the same cutscene, but from the Xbox version. Duct tape? I'll get him a duct tape. Ah, I'll come down here, I'll show him what the duct tape is, I'll show him what to stuff it. Stop it. All I do all day is trying to sort his stupid problems out of the Anyway, so what were we? Um, the milk, the milk, the table, the table, the table, what shall we do? What shall we do with this? Strangely, the multiplayer portion is, on the other hand, uncensored. Although, before one is able to indulge in these forbidden words, a lot of time must be put into unlocking the feature, as it isn't uncensored by default. To add to this, the dialogue files on the game's disc are pre-censored, rather than the beeps being added by the game engine. Now, Censored Gaming contacted Chris Seaver about these changes, and we have now got the official word regarding who's to blame. Despite being anti-censorship, the Conquer developers appreciated the comedic use of beeps in the original game. However, as Microsoft who eventually grew cold feet in regards to the live and uncut angle of the remake. Lacking the use of beeps in the original is something that should not be taken the wrong way. After all, a well-placed beep can be very funny. There is one other difference in the Xbox version, but this time not with any of the N64 versions. It's not quite clear if it was Microsoft's censorship or what, but in the playable demo version of the game, the magazine that Conquer reads actually had a picture of Master Chief on the front cover.
So there you have it, a sad tale of how a developer of a mature rated title had their true vision squashed. To finish, we'll end with a comparison of one of the most memorable parts of the game, the one and only Great Mighty Pooh song. For those unfamiliar with this gripping ballad, words could not do it justice, so sit back, watch, and listen. <laughs> me, 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 me. I am the great mighty Pooh, and I'm going to throw my shit at you. A huge supply of tish comes from my chocolate starfish. How about some scat, you little twat? Do you really think you'll survive in here? You don't seem to know which creek you're in. Sweet corn is the only thing that makes it through my rear. How do you think I keep this lovely grin? Now I'm really getting rather mad or like a niggly tickly shitty little tag nut When I've knocked you out with all my bab I'm going to take your head and ram it off my butt Your butt My butt Your butt That's right, my butt Ugh. My butt Ugh. My butt As always, thanks for watching. Censored Gaming is the definitive resource for censored gaming. Make sure you've subscribed to stay up to date with the latest edits and changes in games. And if you're on the lookout for new gaming sites to visit, head on over to gamesnosh.com where we've got news, reviews, and editorials about the latest happenings in gaming. I also host the official podcast, which you can find on my YouTube channel in the description below. I'm Jajeka Steve, and thank you for your time.